Ayasha Kangiza, Michel Block. Nice meeting you. Thank you uh, for making some time for our introduction to uh, maybe uh, answer some questions regarding uh, BW uh, for HANA 2.0, uh, Datawarehouse Cloud, and S for HANA. Yeah. Uh, we've gathered a few questions, uh, so please answer them uh, as, as much as you can. Our first question is um, um, BW for HANA 2.0. It's uh, it came out this year. What do you right. uh, have to say about the product? What is it coming new with it? I mean, we made, as you know, it's. Uh, built on the main four pillars like modern UI, um, performance, openness, data integration. And we were working on um, new features in all of these areas, like for the modern UI part, for instance, we added new functionality to the BW cockpit, like right. the theory-based administrator's UI that we added in BW4. And uh, for instance, we added the analysis authorization modeling in there. We added query and data volume statistics based on newly developed uh, ABAP CDS views for right. the statistics content. Um, we also integrated the process chains in the BW modeling tools um, and additionally added some new editors to have everything from the or for the modeling guy in the modeling tools now so you don't have to switch anymore between the uh, modeling tools of GUI and so on. Um, on the openness side, we added a new SQL view, which is being generated for the data store object. All right. Um, basically allowing you to, in your native modeling, um, to use that view to do lookups, to do um, some sort of calculations, even though it's also taking into account the data tiering optimization. Right. Um, basically giving you the possibility to, wherever the data is actually stored, because you have moved data to the warm, to the cold here maybe, um, you don't have to worry about that because you will just use that, that SQL view. Um, on the data integration side, we were working on more features for the um, data integration. Um, basically integrating the process chains with the data task workflows, uh, vice versa, so that you can schedule task workflows out of a process chain on the BW side that you can schedule a process chain out of a task workflow on the data app side. That's nice. Um, to be better integrated there. On the um, performance or analytics side, we also made some enhancements to the uh, live connection model in BW, basically giving you the possibility now to um, have new chart types in SAP Analytics Cloud, for instance, and to do some geospatial um, modeling have some more charts like like waterfall charts, time series, things like that. Um, yeah, that's basically like probably four domains where we made some new iterations. Sounds exciting. Also, uh, the combination of uh, BW uh, in combination with Analytics Cloud. Yeah. So uh, more uh, synergy between the two. Right, right. Um, also, talking about BW for HANA uh, 2.0, um, we see a lot of uh, companies that move, uh, that migrate to s yeah. Do you see s for hana as a complementary project? Should it be the choice for the companies to take? Or? Um, yeah, definitely, because what we also did is in BW4 is that we would now leverage the new ABAP CDS content, which is part of S4. Yeah. Um, so you would still have the possibility to use your um, extractors you used before in BW or in BW4. Um, but also we, we offered um, or we now offer support for leveraging the CDS use directly. So basically allowing you to replace your extractor logic if you if you like that, if you want to move to other CDS views in the future. And then you skip the ODP layer or the ODP connection? That would be um, skipped by that, but it's also still there. Yeah. It's like not being removed from BW. So everything is um, still there, but it's like an additional way how to integrate S4 data into your BW4 system. Okay, so they gather more up to each other. That's right. nice. Uh, furthermore, um, yeah, you have uh, BW for HANA as well um, in combination with um, Data Warehouse Cloud. Uh, do you see anything in the future that uh, would complement each other or uh, anything that uh, yeah, might work together better? Um, basically, it's like, um, I mean, what, what's uh, really important to understand this is that Dataverse Cloud will not replace BW or BW4 um, because we basically, or the strategy that we have is uh, like, there's still the native SQL data warehousing, there's still BW or BW4 for the on-premise world. Um, and that's not being replaced by Dataverse Cloud. 
which is basically covering our cloud domain because in the public cloud we didn't yet have any uh, data warehouse offering. Um, but because all the three products will still be there, we are also working on a tight integration between the three. Um, even or especially for BW4 because that is also what, what we envision as a on the one end starting point. If you want to go cloud eventually, if you have a cloud strategy within your company, um, then BW4 would be your starting point to um, smoothly transition uh, on a scenario per scenario basis, all the scenarios you would still require afterwards to Dataverse Cloud. Yeah. Um, so we are working on some sort of um, metadata or data transfer integration between the two. Um, but also the other thing that we, or what we think of um, is some sort of hybrid or mixed scenario for Dataverse Cloud and BW4 so that you would still leverage all the um, uh, benefits. sophisticated benefits and then governance and um, master data hierarchy functionalities, whatever you have in VW, you already have your uh, scenarios modeled on premise and you want to keep them there. Um, but then you have some sort of mixed scenarios because you also want to allow your business users to be more flexible yeah. in a way how they can um, enhance or modify models when consuming them um, in their reporting tools. And that's then um, the way how we envision BW4 as the on-premise source still containing your main scenarios. You want to have tight governance on. Yeah. On top, you put AWS Cloud, allow your business users to um, use those models, enhance them with some cloud data, um, merge some flat files, whatever they need. Yeah. And then on top, because whatever you model in AWS Cloud is then also again consumable in SAC, in other reporting tools. Um, to have the, the mix and merge between the two worlds and then being able to consume it in the reporting tools. Yeah. So that's like the main two um, ways how we envision the um, playing with the two products together. I saw in the keynote indeed that it will be the center pillar for indeed maybe VW for HANA, S for HANA, web streaming or whatever, and right. then try to figure out uh, what's uh, relevant for your company business and uh, from there on. Yeah, use Elens Cloud to uh, uh, make the front end. You can basically think about it also as an, a single governed layer um, connecting to all heterogeneous sources you have in your landscape or you have outside of your landscape. Um, but for uh, whoever consumes the data, there's only the data with Cloud layer. You don't have to take care about where the data is coming from. And um, because the IT guys, they would still take care of connecting all the sources to the AWS cloud. But um, from your point of view, it's just one single unified layer. You would build your models on top of it. You don't care about where the data is coming from. And so you have one single layer of governed semantics, yeah. governed models. Um, and on top of that, you would then use uh, as if you're analytics cloud or a different reporting tool or a choice data. Yeah, to, to read the data, to do your reporting on, on top of those models. Wow, sounds really good. Thank you for all the updates. I would take, take uh, oh yeah. thank you very much for your time and uh, all the updates. Okay. Very uh, briefly, not, not very briefly, but very big and uh, good explanation of all the new topics. So uh, thank you very much. Thanks.